Hey, my name is Ryan Postel, co-founder of CodeStitch, and in this video, we're going to go over how to use our Figma files most effectively. Uh, so number one, you'll notice we have the button here for Figma. This will open up a Figma file in a new tab with the design file that we actually use to build this site off of. Uh, so you notice we have uh, all of your breakpoints. We got uh, desktop, uh, small desktop slash large tablet, then tablet, and then mobile. You almost never need to use these. I, whenever I do a design, I just grab the, des the desktop version, I copy, and I go to my own Figma file, and I paste. Because you cannot edit our Figma files. That is the master file that everyone needs to have access to, and it needs to be uniform. So you have to take it and paste it into your own personal project so that you can edit it. Like if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to make this a four card, I just you know, copy and paste a card, and I can edit it. You can do things to it. So let's just undo this. Uh, but that's essentially how it works. You can't, you can't edit it. You have to copy and paste it and put it in your own so that you can have access to it. Uh, and one of the things I love to use is the, uh, the save stitches folder. So let's say we have a design. Uh, you don't want to just like grab Figma's haphazardly uh, and copy and paste them as you go. The best thing to do is to save your stitches that you want to use for that client in a folder, and I have a save stitches folder that uh, save stitches folder video I already made that I'll be linking to in the description to show how that works. But essentially, we we save it to a folder like this locksmith. I have I had a client. Let's let's say I made a locksmith site, and I saved these stitches to this folder because I wanted to use these stitches. So when I look at it, this is this this is all the designs I want to use for this client. And let's say I need to put together a design presentation for them. So uh, what I do is I, we start at the top. What do we want? Well, we got to have our navigation first. So let's, let's open that. I'm going to close this one. So we have our nav and then next we want to have our hero. So that's going to open there. And then next I want to have a services. So let's just open a new tab from services. I want to go to a reverse trip, which is a side by side standard reverse and then standard again. So we're going to open that new tab. And then from there, I want to go to our meet the team. And then I want to add the call to action and then the footer. So we got our nav drop down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy and paste this. This is this is how we're going to start. We're going to start with our nav. I'm going to paste that in and we can close that. And then we get our hero over here. So let's just copy and paste this. Copy, paste, and we're going to line it up. We don't need this one. I'm going to send it back. There we go. So that the uh, drop down comes in. I just I highlighted this, right click, and sent it back because it was uh, in the layers. It was on top of this drop down. So we just sent it to the back so that the drop down can stay in front. Uh, so now we have our landing and our uh, navigation. So let's just delete that. Next is our services. We're going to highlight control C to copy, and we're going to paste and put that right here. And then next, we're going to close this. We're going to grab our uh, side by side trip. So we're just going to highlight all three of these guys. I'm going to one, two, three. I don't think I grabbed them. one, two, three. Copy and paste. Now, yeah, see, I missed one. Figma can be a little finicky. I like copy, paste. There we go. Now we got gotcha. you. And then let's grab our meet the team. So I want this one copy and scroll down and paste, line it up. And then we can delete that. We have our banner. Let's copy and paste that. Whoops. And line it up. There we go. We close, open up our footer, copy, and paste. And make sure it's all lined up. And there you go. Now you you have a website, a design. It was done in probably 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, and we see that we see this line here. That means we're a pixel off. So if we scroll all the way in, we'll notice that this is just not there yet. So let's just drag this down and now it's filled. Figma does that sometimes. 
Uh, so now that we have our design, you can see that we got we got multiple colors. This isn't a cohesive design yet. We have oh, and we still have this line. We have one here. That's just what Figma does sometimes. There we go. So what we do to make this more uniform, instead of having individually go and change all the colors, all you all you need to do is high, you know, click, drag, and highlight and see all 14 styles. Here's all of the colors that we have. So let's say I just, uh, I want to use this dark green. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to see all, all the colors. There's my green. And everything that is a different color, I'm just going to make that green. That's green. That's green. You get a green. You get a green. Uh, and you get a green. So I'm going to unlock that one. Where'd you go? So that green probably went to the bottom. No. Where'd you go? Undo. There you are. You're green. So I think oh, we're missing that yellow. Uh, so let's go back. Let's get to our colors. I think I undid the yellow, so that's done. And looks like we just have one little straggler. That's done. Let's make this white because now we have a black, a darker background. And I think we got a uh, yellow in here. See all styles. Oh, I see. It's a very, it's a very faint color. I thought that was a white. So let's let's hit the button to unlock it, and then we just change that to the darker. Now you notice that these guys now are uh, are hidden. So let's just change this to white. And this is the process you'll go through on your Figma files when you when you change your colors and your styles. We're just going through the design and we're making the tweaks that we want to see in the site. Like you don't have to use you know Code Stitch as it as you see it. One of the best ways to use Code Stitch is to grab your designs and tweak them uniquely for your client, and then copy and paste and use your Figma file to show what changes were made and make those changes in your code. So looks like we got all the colors done. That wasn't so bad. So now everything is at least uh, using the same color scheme. And let's say we have a client and we don't want to use rounded corners. Maybe it doesn't work for their brand. So then we just got to go through and everywhere we see a rounded corner, let we press this button to unlock it. And I'll go over, there's going to be a video that shows you how to use Figma effectively. So this isn't going to be a using Figma tutorial. This is using Figma for Code Stitch tutorial. If you wanted to learn how to use Figma, I will also have a video for that. Um, but here, let's just, let's just select and let's just remove some of our border radiuses. And since we're having round, uh, you know, hard corners, now this circle doesn't make sense. So let's uh let's remove that border radius let's make these squares and that's what we're going to do when we when we copy and paste this project we're going to uh, inspect the code find out where that border radius is and go change it and now it's squared so we just do that for all of our design and let's let's say uh maybe we don't we don't want this section here we just delete this we don't need a quote but this is a little bare so we copy and paste a con, you know, our content group. Uh, you want a button here. All of your sections, <clears throat> they should have a call to action button because uh, you want to uh, keep touching the wrong button. Now we got a button here. You want to have those opportunities for your users to have this, uh, this intention like, okay, we're learning about them. Now do you want to learn more about them? Click this button to capture that that impulse. We want them to interact with the website at every section. Uh, so we just change that section now to just have text and a button. Uh, and when we zoom out, we notice that, man, there's a lot of white space in here. And that's going to happen sometimes because every code stitch design has 100 pixels top and bottom. So that when you stitch them together in a design, they have all the same consistent spacing top and bottom. They all use the same four point design system. So all of our values, our margins, our paddings, our spacings are all done by multiples of four in a 12, 1280 pixel wide grid. 
with 12 columns and 20 pixel gutters in the middle. That is a hell of a sentence. Uh, I hope that did not go over anyone's heads, but uh, essentially, it's a, it, we all of our uh, all of our code, all of our designs have a 1280 pixel wide uh, container so that they all fit in nice and neatly. Uh, minus some sections for footers and for service sections like this one, because this has four cards. It needs to be a little wider so it doesn't feel cramped, and that's okay. 1440 is our max pixel wide size, uh, and that makes a site more dynamic. It's not 2003 anymore. We don't have to have one single container that all of our code lives in and abides to. We can have dynamic container widths, and that's okay. Uh, so we have our we have our service sections here. We have white space, white space. It's just, it feels a little empty. And I want to show you this trick that I use for every single website that I make, no matter the design style, the, the theme or the colors, just find something in the middle and make its background F7, 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 too many F7s. And just like that, it's a subtle difference, but it breaks up the design really nicely and it matches any website doesn't matter what you do f7 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 i do it all the time i don't typically like uh coat empty coat stitch sections touching like this like how we have a uh, 100 pixel 100 pixel here i don't typically like that so i would probably make this another f7 f7 or or something else to that matter maybe maybe it would be uh let's grab this color or something and and give it a 5% uh, opacity. Well, that doesn't work. Um, there we go. Five. Uh, now it's just making it opaque in the background, but you see what I mean. We'll make it, let's make it lighter or something. Uh, let's do 100. Like something like that, maybe a little color at the bottom, just so that I don't have too much white space. Um, and then you'll notice here that, okay, well, now we just lost this quote because it's also F7, F7. So, you know, part of going through this design exploration in your Figma is to run into these problems and, and figure out how you want your website to look, the, the final look. Uh, so this one obviously can't happen. So let's just make this white, but you notice we're going to lose that quote. So now we just take this quote and we'll change you to F7, F7. And now look how this design has changed. It got flipped a little bit, but it still looks good. And then all you do is, is uh, for this quote, you just go down here to export as SVG. And now you have the gray quote SVG icon and you just replace that in your code stitch code and it will just be there. Uh, so this is, this is how I do all of my designs. When I'm working with my freelance clients and I'm using code stitch, I will grab all of my stitches from my save stitches folder, open them up in tabs, copy and paste the, the desktop design, because you don't need to have the mobile and all that, just do the desktop. Um, and then I look at it as a whole and I find places where it feels empty or where I, if I need to change border radiuses or, or border sizes, like maybe, maybe this image, I, I don't like how, how big it is. I'll, maybe I'll change it. I'll make it a little smaller. I'll make it a little wider. Like now look how I changed this image, but it's it's cropped. So let's change this to fill. There we go. So maybe I didn't like that. Maybe I like this better. And all I got to do is go into when I when I copy and paste this code, I just find this item and I change its width and height to whatever this width and height is and it will just obey it and we will get this design in code stitch. So this is, this is how you use the Figma really effectively. You don't want to just, you know, paste stitches or paste designs with no clear intent. Uh, it's, it might be, I mean, you can do that and still have a really good site, but if you want to do something, you know, a little extra special or, or something more unique, uh, cause you, you will be reusing these stitches very often. Um, and you want to have some sort of variety so that. That's what I recommend, putting all of your stitches in one design file, looking at it as a whole, you know, adding your background colors to separate sections so it doesn't feel as empty. Like, see, I don't like this anymore. I'm just gonna make this white. I think I can get away with it because this, this breaks it up nicely in the middle. So that's, 
that's how you use this effectively and and making a very clear and cohesive design presentation for your client uh, it might take a little extra time to tweak and make all of the all the edits you want to make for your client but at the end of the day maybe you only spend an hour putting this together where it would have taken you or a designer 30 to 40 hours to even try and come up with something like this but we give everything to you so that you can piece it together and it all just works together you don't have to think that much about it and you don't have to work that much for it so this is the power of of code stitch right here is is just the ability to take your designs make a design presentation make your tweaks go to your code stitch save folders copy and paste your code and just make your tweaks and right away you go from design to presentation to final product within that day and you're done you no longer have to spend weeks toiling over a website we can help you get it done in hours uh, so i i hope you enjoyed this video i tried to keep it as brief as i can without going into too much detail you don't need to know right now again we, we will have a figma tutorial video for developers uh, so that you can understand the tools that are in Figma that allow you to make edits and, and do it with ease without breaking anything. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy Code Stitch. Thanks for watching.